This video is on matching transistors and resistors, plus a subscriber giveaway. What is matching? So matching is a nickname used for measuring a group of parts and grouping together parts which have similar measured performance. In this video I'm going to go over some basics in order to give you an overview and some ideas of, on how to match parts relevant to the Wolverine amplifier build. In general, parts are matched on a specific parameter of interest and parts are often matched into pairs for use in a critical part of a circuit. Component manufacturing. So during component manufacture, parts are often grouped together with an approximate match or grouping and this is listed on the data sheet for the component of interest. For example, LEDs. So component manufacturers may call this binning when it comes to LEDs. For example, binning of different color temperatures and flux bins or lumen output. And you can see the highlighted sections here. It says the bin and order code. Transistors. So manufacturers usually group transistors into ranks listed on the data sheet. For example, HFE groups are often listed as grades such as A, B, C, D and E. If you have a look down the bottom here, you can see, for example, you are going to get a BC547. You might choose HFE classification B, which would be, be between 200 to 450. Resistors. Component manufacturers may provide tolerances when it comes to resistors. For example, tolerances in percent of nominal value or PPM per degree C as a performance parameter. And I've highlighted some parameters of interest up the top there. JFETs. JFETs ordinarily list the IDSS classification, which is a parameter of interest for matching, down the bottom in highlight here. MOSFETs. MOSFETs are often matched also, and MOSFET data sheets usually list VGS, which is a parameter of interest for matching using VGS versus current. So why match parts? The simple answer is performance. In some circuits, you may have a section which benefits from having parts which are the same value or as close as they can possibly be. Examples are as follows. The input section to an amplifier. So this section on the left here is the Wolverine input section. So you can see there's a differential pair with a CAS code and a current mirror. Now, the resistors down the bottom here will provide better performance if they're matched. So if you get two values which are as close to 220 ohm as you can, and then those two values are both as close to each other as you can, you'll optimize for performance. And the same goes for the two resistors up the top here. You could argue they're probably more critical, the 100 ohm resistors in the long-tailed pair. So I would strongly suggest that you buy a few extra of those and, and match the values in pairs. Another circuit which uh, benefits from having matched resistors is the balanced input circuit on, on the front end of some pro audio equipment and the like. Of course, the transistors in the output stage of an amplifier benefit from matching. So let's talk about matching parts relevant to the Wolverine amplifier. In the Wolverine amplifier, resistors and transistors are often two items which need to be matched and let's have a look at the build guide to see which parts are suggested. The first part where matching is measured is in regards to the long-tailed pair Q1 and Q2 and the current mirrors Q3 and Q4 that we mentioned earlier. So these should be matched in performance as well as one can within practical means. Matching the VBE and the HFE is desired but not often achievable by many. So at the least, use a digital voltimeter in the diode test mode to measure the forward voltage across the base and emitter, also known as VBE. This requires a multimeter capable of measuring millivolts to at least three digits to be effective. While measuring, don't touch the transistor with your fingers as it's very sensitive to temperature. Let it sit until the voltage stabilizes, which could take a couple of minutes. So then tag the device with the value. Measuring several devices will eventually yield which ones are best matched for VBE. So as an alternative to the above, use a device such as the Peak DCA75 
and this will provide a reasonable estimate of performance for the pur purpose of matching BBE and GAIN or HFE. If you have several to select from, measure each one and match them by VBE first and then select the devices having the closest value for HFE. So basic transistor matching. Use a voltmeter capable of at least three decimal points to get the meaningful reading. So clip the leads on the base and the emitter and watch the voltage. If you don't get a reading, reverse the leads and don't touch the transistor while allowing it to stabilize. The readings will increase as it stabilizes. Measuring the VBE using the diode test mode on a voltmeter is the very least that you should do to match the small signal transistors. There are several transistor testing devices on the market capable of providing some degree of measurement when it comes to assessing the performance of a transistor. None of these basic test devices are perfect, but they're better than doing nothing when it comes to trying to match devices. Okay, so there is some value to matching resistors. So how do we match a resistor? So during manufacturing, a company might have a high speed resistance bridge or a high speed precision digital multimeter available so they can measure the parts as they're being produced and uh, group them accordingly. At home, I suggest simply using the most precise multimeter you have. So if possible and if it's available, use the relative function and then match the resistors based on their difference. Try to get the exact connection method for all of the resistors you're matching the same and try not to warm the resistor up with your hands. So on the left is a two wire measurement with a, with a basic uh, three and a half digit handheld multimeter. On the right hand side is a four wire measurement with a six and a half digit multimeter, the old uh, HP34410A. So four wire resistance measurements is in general a better method for lower resistance values since the leads are compensated for. So that's just something to think about. So after looking at the build guide, how do we match the bipolar junction transistor? So we're looking to match the beta value or the gain known as HFE and uh, also the VBE value if you can. The cheapest device to use to get your HFE value is one of these cheap and nasty digital multimeters. They work reasonably well for low power transistors. So the next level up. So laboratories and manufacturers often have access to a curve tracer shown here or a component analyzer. So I'd suggest a basic component tester like the bottom right picture or a basic analyzer like the Peak DCA75 unless you want to take out a bank loan and get one of these. The one on the bottom right is what I use. It's sufficient for forward voltage value there. Um, you can plug in small clips like on the peak into the connector here uh, to measure larger transistors if you get stuck. So now that we've taken some measurements, how do we actually find the matched up parts? So after measuring a group of parts, and they're often in the range of 10 to 1000 or whatever's available, these parts are then marked with the measured value and paired up with values which measure identically or very closely within a given tolerance. So you can also mark a number as per the picture on the right hand side. So on the right here, see this number? You can just mark each one, you know, from one to 10 or whatever it is. Uh, and I, I've got a, a very useful tip, thanks to Stuart MP in the Wolverine design team. So if you enter these values into Microsoft Excel and run a sort function on the column, this saves you manually picking pairs. So if you've got a hundred parts, you can just run sort once, go click, and then you look for the number that you've listed for each part. There you go, you've got your match, match pairs. So just as a side note, don't forget to label each part with its value and a unique number. So when you sort them out, they're easily identifiable. Okay, so here is a quick example of how we can use Excel to speed up the matching process. So in column M, we've got transistor BC559C and I've listed all the VBE values that I've measured. And um, on the right hand column, we've got list number. So this is just numbers from one to 24 as an example. So these, these are just random numbers I've entered in. 
Uh, so what you do, you select this area here, then you go to data, sort, and in the sort function, you can choose to sort by column M, and it comes up as VBE. Uh, sort on the cell value, and sort from largest to smallest, or whatever you like. Click go, and there you have it. There's your matches. So thank you to Stuart MP from the DIY Audio Forum for the tip, and happy transistor matching. So sorting it all out, once you've sorted all your match parts into the relevant pairs, I would suggest to organize your resistors, capacitors, connectors, transistors, and active parts into plastic containers, so you can build a section of the Wolverine amplifier at a time. I'll do more of this in an upcoming video. And this brings us to the Wolverine EF3-3 PCB subscriber giveaway. <laughs> in my next video, I'll be giving away one pair of Wolverine EF3-3 boards in green and gold to one lucky subscriber. So these boards are pictured here. And the Wolverine EF3-3 green board set will be two new printed circuit boards which you can use to make one stereo amplifier. All you have to do is leave me a feedback comment letting me know that you would like to go in the draw for these beautiful PCBs and a thumbs up and uh, you could be the lucky winner which I'll announce in an upcoming video. Good luck! And finally, the next video. So in my next video I plan to do an unboxing video of the Wolverine boards which everyone's waiting for, to get their hands on. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe. Don't forget the subscriber competition.